Welcome everyone to the data governance webinars. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Asit Rath. I'm a manager in Informatica Professional Service with me, Ratis uh, Nilakandan, who is the solution architecture and a DZ experts. Uh, me and Ratis have helped many Informatica customers uh, on their data governance journey. Uh, today's webinar is scheduled for one hour. Uh, this is our second one in the series of three data governance webinars that we have been uh, presenting um, um, during this series. Uh, this DZ webinars are designed to help our customer to jumpstart their data governance program. Uh, during our first session, which we conducted in April 30th, uh, we have covered data governance operationalization and focused on data quality use cases in the data governance framework. Uh, if you have missed it, uh, then I would encourage you to go through the recording. Uh, we also have it available in the Info Support YouTube channel uh, in our success portal. Uh, the next upcoming session is planned for next week, which will be covering the data governance for data privacy. Uh, in past years, many organizations have started building Lakehouse either on-premise or on cloud based on their cloud for strategy. And Informatica customers have built the Lakehouse using our data engineering products as well as uh, cloud products. Uh, during this uh, session, uh, we will focus on how you can go in the Lakehouse uh, using our data governance product uh, like Axon Enterprise Data Catalog and Data Quality, uh, as well provide the consumer of your lake house on how to sort the data set available in the uh, in the data lake or lake house using our Axon Marketplace. Uh, high level, what we are going to cover uh, during uh, this uh, session, uh, our agenda, we will start discussing a business problem decomposition. Uh, followed by an implementation flow and talk about some DG personas uh, that are needed uh, for your data governance programs to be successful. Uh, we'll uh, discuss a day in the life uh, scenarios, uh, followed by some operating model uh, for these three application or products, right? And then talk about how a day in life can be converted into a process flow. Uh, finally, we'll close uh, the presentation with a short demo. Uh, then we will open up uh, for uh, the QA session. Uh, the questions can be submitted to all panelists via the QA option, and we will respond at the end of this presentation. Uh, with that, uh, I'm going to hand over, um, you know, uh, my colleagues, Ratis, to talk uh, on the business problem uh, decomposition. Thank you, Asit. Uh, as Asit mentioned, we are having a series of webinars on data governance operationalization, and this is the second in the series. We will be revisiting some of the topics covered in our earlier session, but here in this session, it will be in the context of data lake, data governance. Uh, and before we go down the path of implementation, uh, it is recommended to start with a business outcome in mind. We work with our customers to decompose specific business problems and requirements into its constituents to drive the implementation. Uh, this methodology has been covered by our colleague David Gaffney in our previous webinar, so please feel free to check that out on our Informatica's YouTube channel. But for our discussion today, uh, let me walk you through a problem decomposition process for a very specific use case uh, in the next slide. The use case in this example is around improving marketing effectiveness for a retail firm. And the consideration here is that the data that is used to guide marketing strategies is being sourced from a data lake. Now, companies are always looking to upsell and cross-sell to their customers. But uh, if they do not understand their customers well enough, their marketing investments and efforts may be lost opportunities, which again could be a competitor's game. So when we start breaking down the specific problem, we start looking at the critical data items that help the organization be better understand their customers uh, and which are used for formulating marketing strategies. Uh, now these data items could be things like customer master, uh, customer social media interaction information or customer preferences and so on. Then we start looking at the systems where uh, such data items could live, uh, such as the data lake, or from where the data flows into the data lake, uh, such as systems like a CRM system, or a master data management system, or web logs, or streaming sources, etc. Next, we look at the data structures within those systems, uh, such as tables of files that contain uh, specific customer information like 
customer preferences or customer addresses and contacts and so on. These are the physical or conceptual data sets that we are interested in. And beneath the data sets, you have the attributes such as customer name, address, age, gender, etc. That may be directly used to infer things such as customer segmentation or measuring campaign effectiveness for uh, specific targeted customer segments. Now, once we have broken down the data elements into its lowest unit, we look at managing its impact on the business outcome. Now, towards the top, we have the business level KPIs, such as lead conversion rate or cost per lead to track the business outcome and track progress. Additionally, you may track matrices that indirectly impact KPIs and business outcomes. A metric such as customer data accuracy can provide insight into the quality of data used for making marketing decisions. Or a metric such as monthly traffic to storefront could provide insight into customer interest and engagement levels generated from the marketing efforts. And finally, towards the right, we have the rules that drive the measurement and improvement of the quality of data to drive that specific business outcome. As we look to implement a solution using the Informatica applications on an enterprise scale, uh, it is important to start small by laying down the operational framework and an implementation flow. Most organizations would test the framework through a small pilot, uh, focusing only on a section of the business problem and using a handful of critical data elements and systems. The idea here is to implement the breadth of solution patterns and prove out that the framework is suited for the organization's needs. Uh, it also ensures that the process developed during the pilot is repeatable for later adopters. The pilot usually starts off with a kickoff to ensure that technical and business uh, prerequisite, act uh, prerequisite activities are completed, such as deployment and configuration of the Informatica software acts on EDC and IDQ and then there is clarity on requirements for the pilot. And secondly, we also look to enlisting participants for the pilot and ensure uh, clear expectations are set for them and uh, it is clearly communicated to them and the demands from that time are also clearly communicated to them. Then we look at enablement activities for the participants. Uh, this is to familiarize them with the feature functionalities of Axon, EDC, and IDQ. Most participants would be new to the tool, uh, so it's essential we introduce them to the concept and terminology used within these applications and show how to use the application to perform activities such as basic search and discovery within Axon and EDC, um, explore technical and business lineage within the tools, uh, content onboarding within the tools and also best practices around them. The enablement activities prepare the participants for the next step, which is the execution step. The pilot execution is then performed by the participants who implement the solution in the tool under the guidance of the core data governance team. In the first iteration, the medium of engagement may be initially through workshops or working sessions and in later iterations through ad hoc assistance or office hours. The operational playbook, uh, which we'll be talking about towards the end of the presentation, uh, is also used for reference uh, throughout the implementation cycle. Uh, after each iteration, we also look for a formal review of the implementation to evaluate successes, uh, gaps and challenges and be able to uh, course correct and make adjustments to the design and the solution for later iterations. This model really helps fine tune the solution and makes it ready to be rolled out to a wider internal community within the organization. Let's look at a typical data governance engagement organization. At the top of the chain you have the people like executive sponsor, program sponsors, and ID leaders providing overall leadership and guidance for the program. Under that, the key players starting from the left are the line of business participants, namely line of business data stewards, analysts, SMEs, and consumers. Uh, then we have the core data governance office, which is the central entity who provides guidance on implementation and rollout within the organization. Then we have the implementation partners who provide expertise and advisory service for the program. 
And lastly, we have the partners on the technology side who provide application support and system expertise. The point that we want to emphasize over here is that for any DG program to be successful, a culture of close collaboration between these groups is essential. As an example, if a line of business data steward is to be able to identify or onboard critical data elements for a business problem, the, gu the guidance around the process may be provided by the central DG team. The implementation partner may provide the best practices of connecting to the system uh, which houses the critical data elements and also uh, provide best practices around onboarding them. And the technology partner will provide the access and necessary support to make that connection happen. A governance program benefits a wide community of stakeholders across the organization. Different personas have varying goals on how they manage and consume data. A senior executive may be interested in knowing the compliance status of the organization against enterprise level security or legal standards. A self-service BI user may be interested in finding the most trustworthy source of customer information and so on. The Informatica data governance applications such as Axon, ADC, and IDQ can cater to each of the personas to address their technical and business needs. For more details on this topic, please check out our previous webinar but for the data lake use case explored in this presentation, we will be focusing on two specific personas. One is the data scientist from a data lake consumer perspective, and the other is the data lake steward from an enabler perspective. In the next few slides, let me walk you through some simple data lake data governance use case flows. As different personas participate in the data management process, they would be expected to perform certain activities as what we uh, refer to as day in the life of scenarios. In this example here, we look at it from a data steward's perspective. A curated data set has been recently created and loaded into the data lake and the steward wants to certify and publish this data set for end user consumption and subsequently track its access and usage. The example flow provided here gives one flavor of such a flow, but the implementation may have slightly different flows based on the framework. Uh, let's look at the different steps in this particular flow. Once a data set is created in the data lake, the steward may look to identify the business glossary definitions and the business context around the data set. He may also look for uh, policies impacting the data set such as a usage policy or a retention policy or a regulatory policy. Once these are identified, the steward may then onboard the data set onto Axon and associate the glossaries and policies to it. Uh, then the stakeholders and owners are identified and associated to establish ownership. And if there are any rules to measure and track data quality of the data set, the steward may define them as well. The next step for the steward would be to capture the data quality measurement scores to evaluate the trust level of the data set. For this, he may enlist the help of a data quality steward and a developer to develop and apply the data quality rules and capture the results. And once the steward has all the information to certify the data set, he may set a trust rating to the data set and publish it for end user consumption. You may notice that this example uses the Informatica marketplace capability, which is the storefront for all published data collections. And we'll talk about it a little bit more in our demo. Next, we look at another use case. This time, this could be a day in the life scenario for a data scientist or a self-service BI user who is searching for trusted information from the data lake that they want to use in a BI report or an analytic, analytical model. Um, based on this particular flow, to find the right data set, the data scientists would access the Axon marketplace and search for that information. The search may yield a single or multiple results, but the user may want to narrow down to the right source of data. For this, he may evaluate the attributes of the data sets, its data quality scores, and its trust rating. Once a user has made a choice, the next step would be for them to review the policies and terms and conditions of usage. Once a user accepts these, 
They can check out the items as they would do while shopping online. The checkout will internally trigger an approval workflow that goes to the data owner for their approval. And once that approval is granted at this point, the user works with the technical data owner to uh, get the appropriate access to the data object in the lake. Now, if the data object cannot be directly accessed, then a data provisioning process may be initiated to copy the data to an accessible system. The data scientist then goes and finally closes the order fulfillment process. The next item that I'd like to cover is the DG operating model. Now the operating model as we refer to it uh, are some configurations and settings within the tool to support the solution design or the framework. Now, these are essential to driving user behavior within the tools. Uh, for example, a user defined workflow process may impact the set of tasks that a steward and a data owner need to perform in order to approve a glossary definition. Uh, in an, another example, in EDC, the security model will dictate the entitlement for data stewards uh, for catalog assets that they manage versus the ones that they don't. Now, some of these configuration items are listed in this slide, but in the interest of time, we'll take a look at just a couple. My colleague Jadeep has covered a few of these in the first webinar of the series, so please feel free to check, out, check it out on Informatica's YouTube channel. As examples, uh, we'll cover the EDC security model and the marketplace configuration in the coming slides. A big part of the early design discussions for the solution is the user entitlements in the application. Some of the questions that drive the setup are, what are the different roles that need access to the catalog? What are the activities that would be performed by each role in the catalog? Uh, should line of business users have access to catalog assets owned by other lines of businesses? How do I onboard users and provide them the right set of privileges aligned with their roles? Establishing a robust security model will help address these questions. A typical approach that we use for setting up one is to identify tool specific roles that map to the governance roles and establish those roles in the catalog. Uh, then we go through an exercise to establish the privileges for a role uh, through a role privilege matrix. <clears throat> As a result, a data steward role might be given access to curate uh, information or view sensitive data versus a read only user who might only have access to read metadata and no data. Okay. An example of a role privilege metrics is shown over here in the slide. The next step is to map roles to groups of users. The groups may be established in Active Directory or locally within the application. And this allows users to inherit the privileges of the roles established earlier. And finally, we establish uh, permissions on individual scanners so as to restrict access to the catalog for the different users. The other set of configurations that I wanted to touch upon is the marketplace configurations. As you can see from this slide, we can categorize a collection of information in the marketplace into categories and subcategories. These pro provide additional context to the published data sets and make it easier to navigate and locate data sets of interest. A category or a subcategory could be established and created before a data set can be published to the marketplace. The other item that I wanted to touch upon is the data de delivery options that can be configured for the marketplace. Uh, these are options or mechanisms of how the data gets delivered to an end consumer after the request to use the data set is approved and fulfilled. So it could be either through a CSV file or it could be through a load extract into a database or it could be just giving access to that particular data set within the data lake. For the rest of the presentation, let me turn it over to Asit. All right, so thank you, Ratis. And uh, so let's start with uh, talking about the context of uh, data provisioning, right, in the lake. Uh, so when we think of data provisioning, we think of like two categories, right? Categories, one is a contributor who certifies and contributes assets for a consumer to 
uh, use it to fulfill certain requirements like reporting, uh, predictive modeling, and types of or any other types of analytics purpose. Uh, your basic contributors are uh, your stewards or the owners who uh, would own the asset in the lake house and publish them for consumers to check it out and use it. Uh, there is a technical data owners who will help to operationalize a full pin and make it available to the uh, to the consumer through an external process. Uh, the second category um, is the consumer category, right? Uh, who uses the data sets to drive certain behavior, certain business behavior. Uh, consumer kind uh, could uh, could be your data analytics or could be your data scientist. I will discuss the detailed execution pro for both the categories uh, in the upcoming slide. Uh, for any lake house program, one of the key elements is to identify the critical data elements or the critical data set business, right? The, the way you identify your critical data sets or critical data element is something that uh, is very, um, very critical to your business, right? Very, uh, it either, you know, not having that one or compromising that, as that assets or compromising that elements could put your business into jeopardy. So certain critical data elements and critical data sets are important to your business, which are part of your lake house, while choosing which one to publish into the marketplace for the end consumer to use it, you need to consider the usability of that asset. Once you identify which data assets are critical and why those critical, how those will help the end consumer to solve a business problem and meet their KPIs, then you are ready to publish under the marketplace for consumer to, to use it. So from the data provisioning contest of our customer, identifying the critical data set to publish it and the, uh, and the consumer will consume it to fulfill certain business outcome also provide them a, this also provide them a platform to collaborate between, you know, the data owners and the data consumer, right? Uh, so the flow of the execution that you will look into at the next slide was common approach. First, you identify your critical data as assets. Then you onboard that critical data sets into the governance platform or the axon. And then what you do is, you know, take that critical data set and publish it into the marketplace and then put an operationalization order management process for the data consumption to um, consumption to consume it, right? And we'll look into that process flow as our next uh, slide. So this is a sample CDS onboarding process flow, right? Um, this is a sample CDS onboarding process flow, a contributor process flow. Please keep in mind that depending upon how your organization is structured, um, these will differ from um, customers to customer. Uh, this is a typical flow that we're providing here just to have the conversation around how the onboarding process flow actually works, right? Uh, if you investigate a data provision process, we can see here that different personas will do different activities. So here we have identified two personas, data stewards and DQ specialists. The in initial flow is for the contributor. And then the second slide will talk about the consumer. Uh, this is specific, specific today um, in, a, in a live session, which is, uh, which is to onboard a critical data set and publish to the marketplace. If you look at the first step, the goal is to identify the critical data set, right? The critical data sets can be identified outside of the application with a collaboration between multiple stakeholders. You will use certain process guidelines to identify the CDS and then use Axon to propose the CDS working with their business counterparts for a specific business domain. The stewards will work with different subject matter expertise and stakeholders to agree on the definition of those critical data sets or the critical data elements. Once all agree, then the stewards can assign the stakeholders in Axon, right? So that's where the process will start, right? Identify critical data sets and then agree on the business class redefinition and then basically agree on the uh, stakeholder and assign a stakeholder. The whole process flow may or may not turn into a workflow or can, talk, can also turn into multiple workflow. This is just a process flow to guide what other persons are going to do during these conditions. Once you have identified the critical data sets or critical data elements and started documenting the definition in Axon and assign the stakeholder the next step to identify which all system they go, they exist in. To discover where those critical data elements are present in our org, we start scanning those in the enterprise data catalog and map those technical terms to a business definition. The auto discovery and tagging uh, process started in Enterprise Data Catalog, EDC. The inbuilt artificial intelligence functionality in EDC actually helps to identify the potential occurrence of those elements in other entities that have not been identified. The intelligence system suggests other systems that 
they have the data elements using an intelligent algorithm. This leads to the curation of that asset with the help of the users, the, the metadata get curated, then through the auto onboarding functionality, the curated contents can be onboarded to Axon, where the stewards can further curate it and define the conceptual view of it, which will put uh, in the tips of the non-technical business users to, to consume it, to, to use it. At this time, we have identified the critical data set and it needs, but have not checked the quality of the data set. The profiling analyst, the profiling analyst, right, um, can start building profiles around the data set and stewards can start creating rules around it to check the quality of the data. The stewards can build the certification process and document which of those critical data sets are flow are now ready to publish into the Axon marketplace, right? At the end of this process flow, you are able to build a basic catalog where you have set business definition, expectation around the critical data set, assign as stakeholders, lineage of the physical data set information from the physical world is onboarded into Axon in user-friendly terms where it's easier for the users to understand it, right? And through the involvement of a DQ specialist, you have built the data quality, you know, rules and trend analysis around those elements. And finally, right, um, it published um, to the marketplace for the end customer to sub for it. This process flow actually depicts the contributor category. And then what we are going to do is in our next one, we are going to talk about uh, a consumer category of process flow. So in the previous process flow, we actually saw a contributor, um, you know, execution flow or process flow. Here we are, we are going to see a consumer process flow, right? So um, now let's see consumer process flow, uh, how, how that works through. Uh, the premise of this flow are that the users is looking for a certified data asset in the lake house for the analytics use cases. That could be anything, right? This is also an order fulfillment process where the consumer would like to check out the data sets or collection of data tests to drive certain business needs, either to create a report or to build a specific model, right? This process assumes that the marketplace categories are created and the critical data sets are onboarded into the marketplace by the um, data owners or using the contributor process flow. This process flow, this process flow starts with initiating a request by the end consumer for a specific data set. The consumer can then source the data, data sets before requesting. The data sets can be available under multiple categories. The consumer may be looking to search for the specific category aligns to the business need. The consumer can visit EDC and evaluate the technical assets to see additional curation, et cetera. The consumer then can actually source the assets using specific filter condition to meet their need and can find details proposed of the data asset. Authoritative source like who owns the data, select the assets that they are interested in, and take a look into the details like who owns it, propose of the data set, source of the data set, technical owners, quality rules break down by the rules applied by the stewards, the delivery mechanism, and the data access policy, right? After the consumer accepts the user policy and check out the data sets request flow to the data owners for the fulfillment process, right? The data owners then review it and approve the process. The technical data owner then makes the data available to the consumer through an external system, could be a service now or something to the process, right? Uh, with the process, you can see how the collaboration methods helps to end consumers to review the data they are looking for. So basically, you know, we saw a contributor process flow and a consumer process flow so far, right? So before we discuss about the SART demo, we would like to talk about the operational log book. So this is what, where your operational round book comes into picture. This is just part of the overall round book for each execution part of the process flow. Let's say the data stewards want to do a curation of the metadata, then for any questions around how they can, you know, just go to the section, review the operational road book. Similarly, you know, what need to be done, what need to be avoided, how to troubleshoot so if some kind of issues comes back and get some help, right? So that this, this run book can actually anybody like a stewards or can somebody like a consumer can actually go to the run book and go to the session to try to find it out if they encounter an issue. So it, it's highly likely that, you know, uh, you could you could put a lot more contents into this operational notebook, but this is to give you a, um, you know, snippet of uh, what, um, uh, what are the things that actually you can put into a um, run book. Um, let's think about a scenario where recently a very important data lake project went live and the data owner or stewards planning to make the data set available um, 
to your consumer who could be the data scientist or data analyst, right? There are multiple ways critical data assets can be onboarded into Axon, right? During this demo, I'm gonna show you how to onboard objects into EDC by scanning a lake house, perform profile and domain discovery to understand the data anomaly as well as discover the types of types of data available in the lake, curate and enrich the assets, certify the assets, and then onboard the asset into Axon by integrating uh, ADC and Axon, right? On the other side, Axon could be integrated directly with the DQ uh, for the DQ scorecard and profile results are displayed in the DQ facet in Axon for users to the quality of the data. So I'm gonna show you that. Uh, once the data sets onboarded into Axon and the linkage is established with other facets like glossary for definition, policy system, and data quality for business to source and identify the attributes and data sets, the data set then can be published into the Axon marketplace by the data owner. And the lake house data can then be sought by the data consumer for analytics purpose. Okay. So we'll start with the ADC. As I told you, I can go back and look for something like a customer, right? And then EDC is going to uh, um, you know, suggest me some intelligently, some of those customer string that I can use. I'm looking for mostly customer ID, right? Um, and then uh, you know, in the customer ID, right? And then I search it, it's going to pull out all the customer ID related information from the lake. But I'm interested uh, from, from the entire enterprise data catalog, but I'm more interested on the lake. So I can select the resource, which is a lake resource right, lake house, and then once I, um, and it's going to show me the customer ID in the lake house, I can click on the customer ID, and it's going to take me to a details, it's going to tell me the lineage, where it is coming from, and then I can see very likely that it is coming from a resource called data lake production, but it is, this is your uh, data sets, right, or, or basically the tables, or in the case of a delimiter file, um, on the lake, which is available on the S3 uh, on your lake house, right? Um, you can see a lot of columns over here. Um, it, it gives you some sample columns, right, uh, from the data set. It's also give you some data domain. I have curated the assets by providing a data owner for this data set. You can also define some of this composite domain. Some of the best practices is the classification is basically you can build some custom attributes. You can certify that assets by putting the trust rating here. Right. You can also provide reviews and questions and answer and comments and then, you know, rate, rate these things. But what we are going to, and you can also go back to the fields to basically to see like what are the columns that is coming from that physical field that is coming from EDC. Uh, and then, you know, the data domain rules that we run and some value, um, you know, of that uh, value of that uh, data sets and basically, you know, what are the null distincts and kind of things, giving some profile results, right? Basically, and it also gives you a lineage and impact and relationship. So once this information is scanned in ADC, you can integrate Axon and ADC, and then you can form a lineage uh, between those two. And then what happens is all this physical contents now can be available in Axon to view it, right? So I go back to the Axon and I logged on with, uh, with my ID, right? Um, as a as a steward, right? And then I can go back and look into the lineage that actually um, came into ADC and onboarded into Axon, right? So once I start uh, looking for it, um, and then if you can look at here, um, the parent ID, it is searched because I was already logged in with my ID. So it's kind of put that searching mechanism. I did not clear it, so it's still there, right? What it is going to show me is, you know, there are 79 resources and with 936 of different columns has been um, bought from uh, ADC. But if I look into a particular data set that we, ha we are interested in the lake house, you can see on the left-hand side that these are the fields that came from the ADC and then it is associated to Axon, uh, you know, glossary here. Now I can, I have already associated the data set that was created in Axon for, um, uh, for this lake house, uh, um, you know, lake house, right? And uh, also for the system lake house. So I, I can click on the associated. Now you can see back here that there is a data set different name, which is business definition of that one. Business name was created in, it's called analytics data. And then the system of the data set is lake house, right? Um, and then the data bot is actually associated. It, it created the link case between EDC and uh, uh, and Axon, right? So I can click on the data set uh, in Axon, right? 
what it does is it's going to take me um, what has been created in Axon as a data set. And basically it tells me that, hey, this is the data sets part of this lake. And these are the attributes that are created for this particular lakes, right? And these are the physical fields that is coming from ADC. And these are the glossary name associated with that. Also some of those critical data element, whether true or false, right? You may not have all the critical data elements, but certain critical data elements. You can also look into the stakeholder tab here and you can find it out who are being the stakeholder uh, for this particular asset in case of data owner is John and data stewards is Arshit, right? And then you can also look into the impact tab and then impact tab under policy, you can see if that, that data set has been impacted by any kind of GDPR or CCPA policy, right? You can also go to the data quality because uh, DQ is integrated with Axon here. So you should be able to see some of the rules that has been imported from DQ into Axon. In case of here, we have a data bot with completeness and a full name, you know, name with completeness. And I can see the rules applied here and the results is 95% for the data bot matches, but the completeness reaches by the 80%, right? Now what I can do is I can go back as a um, as a stewards or in case of um, a data owner, they can actually publish this particular assets into the marketplace. So I can go back to my Unison search <clears throat> and, uh, excuse me, and look for the data set, right? In this case, the analytics data set, which is I'm interested in. So I can select that, right? And then I can find that, or I can have multiple data sets here. I can select all of them. And then I can say that it's coming from the system. And as an owner or the stewards, I would like to, uh, bulk publish that one. So I can click here. What it does is it's kind of going to show me all the category. It's asking me that as a owner, as a um, stewards, where do you want to publish under the marketplace? So in the marketplace, we have created all this category, right? I can click on the category and it's going to tell me what are the category currently defined in the marketplace, right? There are category like customer, finance, human resources. You can build all this category in advance. And in case of our case, we can actually deploy that into a customer uh, category, right? Uh, because it's a customer related information in the lake house. Now what I can do is because this has already been uploaded, I'm not going to publish it again, um, but I can go back to the marketplace um, tab to show you how that information can be searched to make sure that, you know, you as a um, owner, you as a steward, so when you publish that information, where do you go and search it, right? So I can go to the category called customer um, and then look for that analytics here search for that, right? And then I can say search and it's going to tell me that, you know, hey, um, John um, is the owner here, category is the customer, uh, and then the analytics data and the purpose of this, I can click on the analytics data and it's going to give me the details that actually I, uh, John has uploaded uh, this uh, data sets, right? So it tells me that, hey, purpose of this one, it's, it's published, right? Owner is John, technical owner is Ashit, category is customer, right? I can also see some breakdown of the quality rules here, data quality rules. It also tells me that how this data can be delivered to a consumer, right? What is the delivery mechanism? I can add more delivery mechanism, right? If there is a different delivery mechanism, I can add that over here, right? And I can also go back and see the details about the analytics data because this is what the consumer is going to see in their site, right? And then some of those delivered policies are defined here. Now, once as a data owner, I publish this asset into the um, lake, right? Into, in, sorry, into the marketplace, I can actually now log out as a, <clears throat> as a, um, owner or, uh, or as a um, stewards, I can log in as a normal um, consumer, right? And then I would like to see like, you know, how can I um, order that data? How can I shop for that? Or how can I um, check out the data? So I go to again marketplace as a user this time, right? As a consumer and then I log into the marketplace and then I go back and look for, um, the analytics tab or analytics, right? And then it's going to tell me that, hey, there is an analytics data set available. And these are the summary of that information. These are the delivery mechanism, right? And this is the data set. So I will look for more into that one to find it out that, hey, these are the customer related information that it looks like. And it is coming from a owner, John, which is more, more a certified and authoritative source. So I'm good with that one. Now what I can do is I can go back and check out that asset, right? So I can select checkout 
and it's asking me for a business justification. So I can say that um, I'm looking uh, this data set, right, to use in my uh, marketing report, right? Something like that I can see, and then I can say, you know, this is the delivery target, this is optional, any kind of other additional request that you can put here, and then you can basically say next, right? And then you accept the terms and policy of use of this particular data set, and then you can say agree, and then you can submit the order, right? Once you submit the order, you can go back to my tab, you can look into the order, but now I can go back and actually log on, um, log on as a, uh, owner or log on as a stewards to find it out like you know uh, if I can see uh, what has been requested by a consumer right so I can um, go through the order fulfillment process right so I again log in here and then go to buy um, as a owner right uh, data owner I go back here and then uh, look for the task right because there is a notification there is a task and if you can look here I can see the order number 28 has been submitted by the um, Ratis in 11 May 2020 analytics data and it's saying what is the business certification I can actually approve or reject this one so I can click on that I can either put comments to get more information from the user or I can say approve a request so in case of here you know I can say that your request is approved right and then provide some external ticket information if that need to be generating, right? And then I can basically say approve request, right? And then uh, basically, you know, once the request is approved, there should be a fulfillment process which need to be carried over by the technical data owner. And I can say fulfillment and I can say like basically, you know, delivery target uh, and add some comment here, right? You know, this request, will be um, you know will be fulfilled in next you know eight hours or something like that right fulfillment of uh, uh, that particular request right and i can put an incident ticket here right one two three four um, and then i can click uh, fulfill which means uh, the data is now been um, um, and now been moved uh, to the consumers as per as per the delivery mechanism so what we have seen so far is basically uh, we saw how how adc can scan something and then how we can curate the methods or what is the best practices that you can use in adc to make sure um, you know you you curate uh, and then you enrich the data and then you certify that one then you onboard that you integrate that with the action governance tool then you create uh, the business definition for the data assets and you integrate Axon with the DQ and then use the data sets as an owner to publish into the marketplace and the consumer you can uh, then consumed it right and then within that the, the technical data owner has facilitated the pro so the data sets to to move it uh, to 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 use the delivery mechanism so this is about uh, the demo right this is a very short demo um, but um, you know this gives you an end-to-end -end flow of uh, um, uh, 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 of um, you know how these three data governance applications are integrated with each other so if you have any questions right so we are here to help you if you have any question you can always reach out to um, uh, the following uh, folks uh, in our um, uh, informatica and then we would uh, you know uh, we would be happy to help you so with that uh, i'm going to uh, thank you for listening to this one and uh, at uh, this webinar and I appreciate your time and then we are ready to take some questions um, from from the audience we are live for questions now so we're just going to start with the list of questions please uh, Feel free to post more questions along the way. So there was a question about um, that this particular use case or the at least the, this presentation's focus is more on enterprise production data currently in place. What happens when there are process changes or if there's applying governance in Palo <clears throat> or in advance of a new software development project like building a new customer 360? So uh, for, we are currently, for this session, we are focused on 
data marketplace, giving that shopping experience. And the prerequisite to that is that the data set needs to be at some point in time curated, certified, and published. That's when you make it available uh, for shopping. So in case, I mean, this happens many different ways in organization. And sometimes you find a starting point where you may have a data lake and you have a very clear-cut process of curating information and having a curated zone, and those are already well-established, certified, and published. So you can take that and publish them to jump start. In certain cases, it's not as well established. So you may want to look at all the different views that are published for analytics and reporting purposes. They are kind of curated data sets or looked at as curated data sets. And in certain cases, customers put a certification process in place. Uh, uh, they set some minimum standards for data sets to be consumable and ready for publishing. They do that. So to establish this data set onboarding. However, answering this question, if you have other initiatives in place, let's say a customer 360, and governance comes into play, governance can help in many different ways for a customer 360, maybe the initial phase of identifying uh, uh, the data for, for the customer 360, different sources, um, looking at the data quality of those, but one of the aspects of that would be that once you are creating, in, even in every process, you will be coming up with some data sets that are ready for consumption. So if you have a certification place in place, then you can make it a part of your process. And through that, you can start building this repository of data sets which are ready for consumption, ready for shopping. So while data governance, there will be broader data governance applied to all these use cases, but this as aspect of always certifying the curated data as part of that process and publishing it could become an implementation. But but key thing here is that there has there would be an effort before you make the shopping experience enabled, which can be done through acts on marketplace. This there has to be enough for people to shop over there. And that can come from many different areas depending upon how your organization works. So that was one question. Um, there is there was a question about uh, that apart from the scanning process in EDC, is there a way to enable the link between EDC and Axon? The answer is uh, Axon and EDC integration does allow auto onboarding of elements from EDC to Axon. It can go into different ways where one way is that you have content in Axon and you can auto onboard the physical side of those attributes data sets from EDC and associate it with the conceptual side in Axon. The other way is that you can literally auto onboard and build the data set and attributes in Axon instead of manually building them. You can bring it over from EDC. Key things to keep in mind is that there are best practices and pitfalls around it. You don't want to open the floodgate and just onboard all the elements. Some customers do that and then they find it that there's a lot of noise in Axon and they don't find it useful. So there are best practices around it, how to control the flow of information from EDC into Axon so that you get a chance to curate it, certify it. Certain cases, the physical information as is is not consumable. So while you are to onboard, but then you change the terminology to be more user friendly because in Axon, searchability, consumability is the key. A lot of personas they want to be able to find the language or the lingo that they use. So there are various factors on how best to use this EDC to act on auto onboarding of content, but the functionality is there and it's consistently being approved version by version. Uh, continuing on, uh, there was a question about provided, does Axon have a uh, have the capability to provide a 360 view of a glossary term or 360 view of a system. Axon, the basic way of building content is that you onboard different facets of information, information that you already have available in, in many shape and form. People have it in their mind, they have it in SharePoint, they have it in documents, and some of it comes from EDC. But at the core of Axon is that we provide capability or, or allow you functionality to link it all together. And the goal of that is the end experience is that you can come from any lens, whether your lens is a glossary term or a system or a policy, or when you search for it, you would be able to, it will contextualize the rest of the information to be related to what you look for. So if that
that's what you look at as a 360 view, then the answer is yes. Happy to discuss with more details. And then we have people on the team who are in touch with, uh, with the person who asked this question. So we'll follow up for more details. Um, continuing on, Rasid, do you want to elaborate on the consumption made from Axon with EDC a little bit? I know you answered it for the individual, but for the rest of the folks' benefits. <clears throat> oh, yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, so uh, the data conjunction made from Axon uh, Marketplace uh, with EDC, right? Um, so, yes, I think so. The, the way uh, it works right now with our application uh, is basically, you know, uh, as Jay mentioned, you can have your data sets, right, uh, in EDC, and then you sometimes you have tons of them, right? Uh, you can uh, basically, you know, uh, uh, the conjunction side of it, right, so when you're onboarding, the data owner is towards is basically onboarding something, and then the conjunction side, the shopping experience happens. But there is also a fulfillment process, right, that happens actually right now outside of Axon. So we have uh, something on the roadmap which is coming as a service now, right, so that's, that's where the fulfillment happens uh, in the marketplace, right, so, so, so here, here is the process happens, right, so as a, as a owner, you publish that uh, assets into marketplace. Uh, as a consumer, uh, you check out or do that shopping experience. Basically, you know, check out that asset. But there, there is a, you know, there is an approval that happens through the owner. But there is a fulfillment actually happens through someone called technical data owner, right? Based on the stuff that that that's where uh, the conjunction happens, right? Conjunction side happens in the technical data owners because. It's the provisioning. The provisioning happens at the technical data by the technical data owner in the in the marketplace. So so it, it, it normally they, they they kind of you know the, the request could be hey I need this particular data set in my in my uh, you know from from this uh, location of the lake uh, to a particular uh, particular folder or to my uh, to a particular uh, production uh, non-production database for me to check it out for my reporting um, my reporting solution right. So that fulfillment, that provision happens actually outside of the marketplace through uh, through the technical data owner uh, following the process, right? So yeah, um, Jay, you want to go to the next one? Yes. So the other question is: Is it possible to request a data set for a period of time from day to day? So one thing to keep in mind is that Axon is giving you an ability, a platform to have the shopping experience available where the people can browse, they can see what all is available to shop if they, they are looking for customer data, what all data sets are available to shop, I mean, they're certified, what kind of quality do we have on them, and find additional uh, details on that. But when it comes to fulfillment, Axon is facilitating the process of fulfillment, but it's not directly participating in the fulfillment. For example, you can set up many different ways the data would be provisioned, but Axon is not automatically provisioning the data. That happens outside Axon. Axon has a workflow which can facilitate that. In future, you would be able to uh, integrate it with a ServiceNow ticketing system. So the idea of provisioning data from a period of time, you can facilitate it, but Axon will not be able to enforce that thing that your access will be taken off after a certain period. So again, idea is to have audit trace and then facilitating the process through Axon, but th there's no enforcement per se. Access. And people have many different ways of um, provisioning data and then controlling that. So um, for example, in Axon, you can maintain multiple ways of provisioning and then a customer can choose, or a check, people checking out can choose which way they prefer what are the ways available which they prefer, Axon can allow all that, but then uh, some sort of ticket or some sort of process will kick off which will app make the actual provisioning happen. So I hope that answers um, the, the question. Um, there, is a, there is a question about identifying critical data element, and it's a very valid question. That goes to your starting point, like, okay, there are a lot of critical data elements in an organization, so where do you start? There are many different ways to control that, but my simplest way over there is, you may remember one of the slide over there is about the business problem decomposition. If you keep a specific goal in mind, a specific business outcome, and then reverse engineer the, uh, the critical data element that impacts that behavior, to me, that's the easiest and the best way to make it purpose-driven and make it 
so that you have a good starting point. You have a two north, you have a line of sight into, hey, by addressing these 25 to 30 critical data elements, I can produce this behavior. So rather than just going with the list of critical data elements across the board and thinking that I'm going to govern everything in a sequential manner, if there's a line of sight into a before and after image you want to achieve, meaning let's say there's a sales and marketing initiative going on, and that's your focus, that you want to improve the outreach from that perspective. So you identify some elements critical to that, customer address, customer name, customer email, those kind of things, maybe 20, 30 elements you identify. Focus on that, but the idea is that you are trying to achieve a certain outcome and then there's a purpose behind that that by doing this you will make information available to people improve data quality on these maybe at you find that address data quality is so bad that by improving it your sales and marketing outreach will, will improve so that if you keep that in mind and you are purpose driven then you can break it down into chunks like which order to take it in we do have informatica has a way of kind of this is a simple way of producing a heat map of your key opportunities in our organization, what outcome to focus on in what order. That could be another way. Again, I mean, we, we do know people who are engaged with you, so we'll reach out to you separately to discuss more about that. Okay. Um, hyper, there's a question about roadmap or axon glossary to hyperlink terms in one definition to connect to a term used within that term, for example, a customer. We'll have to find more about the um, roadmap question. We don't have the product people on this, and we typically with roadmaps is always in flux, so we would definitely reach out to, um, and then the person who asked this question, by the way, I'm, I just recently talked to your organization yesterday, so I'm in touch with you guys, so we'll definitely answer that question and find out the roadmap related answer from our product team. Um, so, other question. There was a there was a feedback about the speed of presenters. Thank you for giving the feedback. We'll definitely keep that in mind for the next session. Our, our challenge is that these topics are very wide and very complex. I mean, it takes weeks to address them, and we're just trying to provide a concentrated, distilled version in 45 minutes just to hit some key point. Our goal is to get the thought process going. We know that we won't be able to give you every single answer. Um, so, uh, but we'll definitely try to improve that in the future. So thanks for your feedback. Um, can you explain the process of how a data element that is missing from the data marketplace is added? So data marketplace works on the data set. So there's a slight difference how normally governance works. You go by critical data elements. You identify attributes and then you govern them. They have certain impacts on a business behavior, business outcome. For data marketplace, it goes by data set because primarily it is in the service to um, uh, uh, analytics reporting those kind of scenarios, right? So I was talking about a process about data certification, data curation uh, process in place, right? So uh, I know the, the customer who asked this question, in your case, you have a data lake. So, and I also know that in your case, there is not a formal certification process in your data list, right? So that's something that may change in future. But for now, you may look at your curated zone and then from there onboard those data sets into Axon and then publish them into the marketplace so that they are available for consumption. That, so that's just one particular scenario. However, this will change from customer to customer. Not every customer will have a formalized certification process, onboarding process. In certain cases, you need to look at the way your organization works today and then look at it, uh, uh, like where can we find the curated data set? You may, they may not be called curated data set. Like I can give you an example where data warehouses have views which are published for analytics and reporting purpose. Now, nobody calls them curated data sets or that, but they did go through some informal certification process. So maybe that's the starting point you find, identify them and onboard them. And along the way, it will make sense to add a certification process so that there is more confidence, more faith in these data sets that you are publishing. For example, customer established minimum standards for these data sets. They say, hey, these data sets, the elements on these should have sensitivity classification identified or they should have data quality identified and tracked. And that way to do a tiered rating of the data sets like gold, platinum, bronze, that kind of thing. And that way they can 
showcase the faith in, in, in those data sets that people are consuming. So uh, again, as I said, the goal of governance is not to hard set it in one way, but find a happy balance on how your organization works and then operationalize that process. And then at the same time, try to improve it, try to take it towards an ideal way. Um, So we have somebody to answer the roadmap question. So I, I don't know if somebody from the product team is on. If they are, then the roadmap question was uh, around hyperlink between glossary terms, uh, meaning if you have one glossary term uh, and the relationship could be hyperlink. For example, we click on the hyperlink and will be taken to the, the related terms. So it's an easy way of traversing. That was the question about the roadmap, if I understood it right. Uh, if we have somebody from the product team, please feel free to answer. That. Uh, we are at, at the top of the hour, so I think this is a logical place to stop. We do have some unanswered questions. We will get back to you um, um, and post those answers to you. We have your um, details, so we'll get back to you with the with answer. But thank you so much for joining. Hope it was helpful. Please, please um, stay tuned for the next sessions, which is coming up on the data privacy operationalization on May 21. We'll see you there. Uh, Brenda, Tanya, I guess we are all good, right?